Good morning, welcome, and thank you for joining us on this SAG After live stream on YouTube. To stay informed about all of our live stream and video events, we invite you to subscribe to this channel. You can go ahead and do that right now. Today, we present the President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement live stream, the new Influencer Agreement, Everything You Need to Know. We'll be pausing throughout as we have with us American Sign Language interpreters, Risa Rojas and Destiny Bradford. Risa and Destiny are translating today's program into ASL and will be switching off periodically throughout the discussion. The presentation will begin momentarily, but before we do, if you have questions that you'd like to direct to today's guests, please email pteoe at sagafter.org. That's pteoe at sagafter.org. If you'd like to learn more about our new influencer agreement, please visit sagafter.org slash influencer. Once again, that's sagafter.org forward slash influencer. As a reminder, today's program is being recorded and you can watch the replay right here on SAG After's YouTube, along with more great content 24 seven. Now, please give a warm welcome to today's host. She's SAG After's Executive Vice President and is also SAG After New York President and she chairs the National Innovation and New Technology Committee. Welcome, Rebecca Damon. Thank you, Pam. Hello, everybody. It is uh, so good to be with you today here virtually. And uh, I'm really excited about today. Uh, we do a lot of interesting and, and, and fun things here in the President's Task Force, but today is a really special panel uh, that I'm particularly excited for. It is a hot topic and uh, very worthy to be so. Today, we're gonna be talking about the new influencer agreement and everything you need to know. Uh, we are gonna have the opportunity today to really learn about the world of influencer marketing as we take an in-depth look at the groundbreaking agreement that we've just rolled out. So you're gonna hear about its development, you're gonna find out uh, what kind of work qualifies, how it can be used, and you're also gonna have a chance uh, to really find out why this is an important step forward for everybody in the sag after uh, community, which is to me just remarkably exciting. Our national board uh, just in February voted on and approved this new influencer agreement, which covers creator generated branded content with the goal of both supporting current and future sag after members in this space who are working directly with advertisers and really wanna have the benefits of union coverage. Uh, this is something that I just know this personally, members have been asking us to do uh, for some time and it's really been a, a remarkable journey to be able to bring this together. You've probably heard about the agreement in the news. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about it. Either way, this is the day for you. So it's, it's exciting. So you might be a digital creator who's tuned in to figure out how to make branded content on platforms like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, to really listen to see if this contract is a right fit. So this is the right place for you to be today. Uh, if you have more questions, as Pam mentioned, you can send us uh, those in at pteoe at sagafter.org. That's pteoe at sagafter.org. I am just really proud uh, of this agreement. This has taken a little over three years and change here to come into fruition. And you know, during this time, uh, staff and member leaders really went on a journey of information gathering doing the research. Uh, they spoke to influencers who are both members and pre-members, agents, agencies, stakeholders throughout the entire ecosystem to bring us to this moment to really determine how the union could best support these creators. And so what we're gonna do today is uh, be able to talk about the agreement that we really believe is gonna benefit the entire community and help to create a, a really healthy environment for everybody involved. So I'm so excited. We have, uh, I get to introduce a member of our team, Shane Griffin, who oversees com commercial and influencer strategy. So Shane is gonna start us off today by taking us through an overview of the agreement and then we'll be right back. So go ahead, take it away, Shane. Thank you, Rebecca. So nice to see you. So. Nice to see you. Yeah. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of this presentation, I wanted to first provide some additional background and context as to why this influencer agreement was built, why it's beneficial to our membership, and who this agreement is specifically meant to serve. Because this influencer agreement was always meant to be a tool, but a tool for what? 
Well, over the past few years, like you said, Rebecca, we've seen a lot of changes in the entertainment and advertising spaces. So platforms such as Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok have opened up new opportunities for performance, content creation, and distribution, opportunities that were never before even possible. And advertisers have really jumped on this bandwagon. In fact, according to Forbes and Business Insider, influencer marketing will be a $15 billion industry by next year. So why does that matter? Well, as this industry has been evolving, we want to be we want to first and foremost ensure that our own SAG After members have the opportunity for SAG After coverage when working in this space. But before we get too much into that, let's back up a moment and make sure we're on the same page, beginning with the definition of an influencer. So while there are many ways to define this group, at the end of the day, we recognize influencers as folks who have amassed a social media following and are capitalizing on that following in some capacity. In this particular case, we're focusing on brand deals or advertising content that is created by an influencer for distribution on their own social media feeds, which include platforms such as TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Triller, et cetera, you name it, it's there. And while there are certainly different tiers of influencers ranging from nano to mega, we decided that under the influencer agreement, we would not establish a follower account because we recognize that brands are engaging with influencers from a few hundred followers all the way to folks who have over 100 million followers and engaging with folks everywhere in between. So we wanted to ensure that all ranges of influencers have access to this coverage. And one of the draws for brands in working with influencers is that oftentimes the influencer is serving as a one-stop shop for the brand. The influencer in many cases is not only responsible for the performance, but also is being paid one lump sum to also be involved in the creative, the production, the set design, the wardrobe, the makeup, the lighting, the editing, and most importantly, the distribution of the final product. So in essence, the influencer is not only the performer, but also kind of the ad agency and the crew and the director and the producer and the media buy all rolled into one. Another thing we took into consideration in the development of the influencer agreement is that there really is no one size fits all in the way that these brand deals are being executed. We wanted to develop a path for coverage that would be as accessible as possible. So we left rates negotiable as of right now. So why now? Why are we rolling this up? Well, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, over the past several years, we've seen more and more of our traditional SAG after members start to work in the influencer space. And at the same time, we started seeing more and more native digital talent becoming SAG after members. And while we believe that much of this type of work is commercial in nature and should be covered under our SAG after commercials contract, we kept hearing from folks that they were oftentimes struggling to get brands who are not signatory to the SAG after commercials contract to sign on as signatory for that project. So in some cases, our own SAG after members were losing out on some work opportunities and we wanted to build a tool for coverage in a manner that would make them not have to choose between work and union coverage. We also wanted to create new pathways for membership for influencers who are working as professionals in this space and making a living from their brand deals, but want to be part of our SAG after community. Membership eligibility through the influencer agreement is no different than under any of our other contracts. Influencers who become members through this still have the same obligations that all of our other SAG after members have. So we tapped Hartley these folks just like we would if they were to be cast as a principal under a commercial, under our commercials contract. And finally, we wanted to provide our members who are working in the influencer space a new way of earning towards their pension and health eligibility, because at the end of the day, they are working commercial jobs. So while I could go on and on, you all now have access to this information on the sag After website, which is available at sagafterorg backslash influencer. So as we go through the content today, don't fret, you can always reference the contract and our informational guides at your leisure. 
And one of the resources we have on our website is a glossary of terms that are beneficial for folks who may not be as familiar with the terms I'll be referencing today. So I pulled a few terms from our guide just to ensure that we're all on the same page. So when we talk about signatories, we mean an advertiser or ad agency that is directly signed to the sag after commercials contract and is recognized by the union as the employer of the project. When we talk about covered services, we're referring to the video or voiceover work that is specifically covered by a sag after contract, whereas non-covered services are any content that sag after does not cover, such as print, editing, creative, set design, distribution. Pension and health refers to the entity that collects employer contributions and provides both retirement benefits and health insurance to individuals who qualify. And lastly, standard allocation just means the percentage of the compensation that is subject to pension and health contributions. So now that we have all that out of the way, let's dig into the actual influencer agreement. So in the event that you as an influencer are being engaged directly by an advertiser who is not signatory to the sag after commercials contract, and you're being hired to perform in, create, produce, and distribute that branded content on your own social media feeds and nowhere else, this agreement allows for your business or corporate entity to be the actual signatory and employer of the deal. This agreement is open to sag after members and non-members alike. However, eligibility for non-members will be triggered and enforced. So how does this work? The influencer or the representatives will be responsible for bargaining the deal directly with the brand. Once that contract is finalized, the influencer will go to our website and enter in their information through our agreement portal, establishing their corporate entity now as the signatory of the project. This will also allow for their business or corporate entity to be able to make pension and tax contributions directly. And while the influencer is responsible for bargaining directly with the brand, there are certain criteria for use under the influencer agreement that are good to know as you go into those negotiations. So like I said, the influencer generated sponsored content must be made for distribution on your own social media, nowhere else. Um, your content has to include on-camera video or voiceover content, not just print uh, a print campaign. Um, you as the influencer must be solely responsible for the creative, the production, and the performance and the distribution of that branded content. And you have a corporate or business entity such as a S Corp or LLC that we can recognize as the employer and signatory for the project. Your contract with the brand has to actually be directly with the brand that has to be the hiring entity. We don't allow for the hiring entity to be an ad agency or a PR agency or a third party entity under this agreement. Another thing that's really, really crucial to know as you're going into negotiations is that the influencer must maintain ownership of the final content. They can allow the brand to repost that content on their own social media, but it's really important that the creator maintain ownership of the intellectual property. One of the things that we want to protect is the performer's likeness and ensure that they have control over where that likeness lives and how their content is used. Um, another thing that's really important to know is that under this agreement right now, the individual influencer can be the only performer in the content. We are looking to opening that up, but as of right now, it can just be the individual. So reasons why the influencer agreement wouldn't fit. The brand, if the brand is hiring an ensemble or group for the project, the influencer agreement would not be a good fit right now. So if the footage includes other people, don't fret, you can contact us and we can look at other ways of covering that content. Um, if an ad agency, production company, or PR agency is responsible for the creative production or distribution of the content, again, the influencer agreement would not be an appropriate fit because to us that feels much more like a traditional ad. If a signatory or JPC authorizer, advertiser, or ad agency is involved in the project, again, the influencer agreement would not be a good fit. We actually developed the influencer waiver for our bargaining partners so that they can actually hire our folks as well under similar terms. 
And the branded content, again, can't live outside of social media. So it can't go into things like TV or film, et cetera. This is a very narrow lane for coverage. We also don't allow for any stunts or hazardous work and no nudity or sexually explicit material unless it pertains to the product or service. So in the event you meet this criteria and want to sign up for coverage, you will submit your brand deal via our online portal any time of day, seven days a week at your convenience. And all you have to do is attach your brand deal and put in your corporate or business entity number. And then we actually vet whether or not this is an appropriate fit and get back to you within 24 hours. So pretty easy. Um, one of the things that we actually embedded into the portal is our pension and health calculator. And this function assists in determining how much pension and health will be based on that lower allocation for covered services. Again, all this means is that we recognize that the influencer content is inclusive of both covered and non-covered services. So pension and health is calculated as a more appropriate reflection of that reality. And I do want to highlight that only the amount subject to pension and health contributions counts towards the talent's benefits eligibility. So if someone is being paid a sum of $100,000 and the union's recognizing 20% of that as covered services for their on-camera performance, pension and health would be calculated at the 20% versus the 100%. But the, the performer would only have this amount, the 20% towards their pension and health eligibility. It's math, it's complicated. That's why we built a calculator to help you with that. So as you've seen during this presentation, this agreement is pretty unique. Um, but some of the benefits for coverage are you can actually earn now towards health insurance and pension eligibility through this new agreement, which is fantastic for many of our members who are working in this space. Um, you know, we as an institution provide support and guidance for our members. And this is an area that is still often re referred to as the wild, wild west. So as more and more of our members start to get activated in the influencer space, we can more and more support our folks under this capacity. And we'll have greater ability to advocate on behalf of our members in this space moving forward. So that all said, if anyone has any questions or wants to learn more, please feel free to reach out at influencer at sagaftra.org anytime. We are here to help. It's not scary. We don't bite. And with that, I'll throw it back to you, Rebecca, and we'll take it from there. Great. Uh, thank you, Shane. That was just that was just terrific. And I think it gets everybody kind of to the same place before we uh, start the conversation, which I'm really excited to hear. So uh, I want to introduce our fantastic moderator today, Natalia Castellanos, who is an actor and a micro influencer. Uh, she is also an activist, a SAG after a commercial performer committee member. She has led a life that is just dedicated to the performing arts. Uh, an actress who originally hails from South America, Natalia has booked several large on-camera and voiceover commercial spots for companies like Singular, Gap, Hallmark, McDonald's. I could just list all day. Uh, in addition to having been the voice for bilingual channel MTV's TR3's, Natalia continues to thrive in the voiceover world, lending her voice to many popular TV shows. You might have also seen uh, Natalia on some shows such as Bosch on Amazon, NCIS LA, The Closer, The Doctor, Mentalist. Uh, CSI New York, just to name just a few. Um, over the past couple of years, Natalia has really been working up on building her social media presence, recognizing that social media is a valuable tool for performers' careers mo moving forward. So you're going to be in excellent hands with Natalia, our moderator today. So I'm going to turn it right over to you. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Um, I am so excited to be here today to moderate this panel of extraordinary folks who I can't wait to introduce to you today. Um, they're joining us from all parts of the influencer ecosystem, so you're going to get a lot of knowledge and a lot of benefit here today. Um, before I get into all the, that introducing our guest speakers today, I wanted to first say that I am so very thrilled that SAG-AFTRA has built a tool to help creators obtain union coverage. 
as both a micro-influencer myself and a member of the Commercials Performers Committee, this agreement has a huge significance and a huge meaning to me. It warms my heart that our current members will have a new pathway for earning towards their benefits eligibility and also that influencers who are not yet members now have a new way of joining our sag After community. So without further ado, I want to introduce our fantastic panel, beginning with Wes Woodsgood Armstrong, who was named by Bloomberg Magazine as a game-changing influencer. Apart from being a creator with over 3 million social media followers, Wes is also an up-and-coming filmmaker and a unique voice blending superhero, anime, and comedy genres as influenced by his childhood in Japan with his Marine Corps mom. A graduate of Sony's uh, TV Diver Diverse Directors program, Wes has directed over $1 million of branded uh, entertainment for brands such as Lyft and T-Mobile, and his first major commercials for Allstate aired in fall of 2020. He was nominated for the Streamy Award for Best Director for his series Couples Night, which he created for Facebook Watch, and has had short films supported by Lakeshore Entertainment, Warner Brothers, Crypt TV, Twitter, and many more. Up next, Wes is in post-production of his fe first feature film, a raunchy comedy from the producer of American Pie. Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> and our next panelist is Kiana Smith Brunito. I hope I'm not I'm not murdering your, your name today. Uh, and she is a founder and executive director of American Influencer Council, con uh, who considers herself to be a serial entrepreneur with authentic voice. She began her career as a blogger in 2006 and is now an, an award-winning creative director, digital marketer, and strategist. With over a decade of experience, Kiana is well-versed in building brand awareness, advocacy, and crafting end-to-end -end creative solutions that convert. She made history brokering a deal and leading the execution between NASA and the US Open for the first tennis match in space during the 50th anniversary of the US Open. This out of the world campaign earned her a Webby nomination for the best events and live streams at the 23rd annual Webby Awards. The internet has offered Kiana endless opportunities to create and produce original dynamic content. Her fresh voice and perspective on fashion and beauty have allowed her work to be featured on AOL network sites, teenvogue.com, MSN Living, health.com, shape.com, amongst others. She has provided expert commentary for WWD, New York Times, Best, uh, Business Insider, Vogue Business, Business of Fashion, and more. Through peer nominations, uh, Talking Influence listed Kiana in the top 50 industry players of 2020. Our next panelist is Catherine Buscariel, uh, graduated from the University of Technology, Sydney, Australia with double degrees in law and communications. After relocating to New York City to pursue a career in entertainment, Catherine was admitted to practice law in New York and started working at Creative Artist Agency, or CAA, in the Talent Commercial Endorsement Group, where she spent several years representing and negotiating deals for actors, actresses, musicians, and influencers in the brand partnership space. She currently heads up the business and legal affairs department at Mayflower Entertainment and global consulting agency representing brand, brand clients of all sizes, from luxury fashion houses to negotiating contracts for celebrity talent, uh, I'm sorry, from luxury fashion houses to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, now she's based in Los Angeles and Catherine specializes in negotiating contracts from celebrity talent advertising campaigns, music performances, and other marketing initiatives. Our next panelist is Byron Austin Ashley. He is the president of Setabello Entertainment, which is a full service talent and literary management company that works with actors, writers, directors, hosts, production companies, and influencers to build enduring careers within Hollywood's traditional and emerging ecosystems. 
Cetabella works in concert with their clients to navigate deals in film, TV, books, touring, endorsements, uh, consumer products, podcasts, and digital. Most notably, the company has created blue chip brand partnerships for his clients that include NFL, Warner Media, T-Mobile, Google, Gucci, and McDonald's. Cetabello also has a strategic partnership in place for helping American celeb celebrities access paid opportunities in China. Byron has been nominated for numerous awards, including at the Streamy Awards and the Chicago Midwest Emmy Awards, and was featured in uh, Variety's Dealmakers Impact Report and Business Insider's Top 25 Management Companies for YouTube Creators. And last but ne never least is our wonderful Shane Griffin. Uh, she is a staff here at SAG-AFTRA and she specializes in commercials and influencer strategy. Shane comes to this space with a deep passion and commitment to the performer community. Having spent years researching and exploring the influencer ecosystem, Shane now administers the influencer agreement under the auspice of the commercials department and is always available to answer any questions truly at any time of day or night. And I can tell you, she definitely is always available. So anything you guys ever have, please, please ask her. Um, so let's get started. I have a, a couple questions to get this going. Um, let's actually start um, with uh, Wes. I, Wes, please tell everybody and myself how you got into the world of con content creation yourself. Let me oh, unmute my mic. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So content creation, it started long, long ago on this site called MySpace. And um, I, you know, really just became completely infatuated with being able to connect with my friends and other people online. And then I started going to film school and, you know, learned the ins and outs of what it was to be a filmmaker. Um, so from there, uh, after film school, I got into music videos and commercials and started traveling around filming. And I landed here in LA and I started producing over at uh, Buna Murray uh, on their YouTube channel. So YouTube was kind of like, this is 2000, I want to say like 11, uh, YouTube was really just kind of like taking off, getting its legs up under him. And then uh, Vine came out. And so having my filmmaking background, I started filming a lot of my friends' videos and they were blowing up within a month or so, you know, getting like a million followers right off the back. And I just started watching their lives change. And they convinced me to start creating my own channel. And from there, things just kind of took off. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I love that you were able to use, I mean, we don't even MySpace. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and Vine. That's amazing. Um, yes. What do you find, a follow up to that, what do you find made that difference for you um, between doing stuff for your friends to now? I mean, because I feel like the social media space now is so much bigger and is so yeah. much more. Um, filled with a lot more content, what made you stand out? Um, I think I was able to just kind of bridge the gap between traditional and digital. Um, at first, you know, on, you know, creating digital content, it was really just kind of a run of the mill, just run around with your friends and film stuff. And then uh, creators started really developing the skill and becoming directors. And uh, because I was already a director, I kind of had a, a leg up you know, I understood camera angles, I understood composition, I understood timing and pacing. Uh, also with learning from my friends how comedic timing works on the internet. You only have a short amount of time to make people laugh. It's essentially traffic comedy. So cutting out the air and understanding those, you know, techniques to keep people's attention really helped me uh, thrive in the space. That's wonderful, thank you. And I think that leads a little bit also, I wanna to touch now upon our, our like um, uh, Byron and Catherine right now. Um, Byron, as, as a talent manager and president of Celebetto uh, Entertainment, are, are you seeing the lines blurring between traditional and influencer content right now? 
I mean, I've been seeing them blur for a while now. And at this point, I'm a believer that content is content, plain and simple. And I don't really know where the lines draw. Is it about how popular the stars are? Is it the length of the content? You know, if you were to argue length of the content, would an hour long YouTube video be deemed traditional? Would RIP, a Quibi series, be deemed influencer content? Um, you know, I, it, it's clearly not about the length anymore. And on the other side, you know, how popular are the talent or where did they get their roots? You've got major movie stars making social content at home during COVID. You know, you've got people from Netflix projects, CW shows, starting YouTube channels and competing against other influencers for brand deals. You also have, you know, really breakout names from the influencer and creator world, people like Aquafina, Bo Burnham, who have gone from making YouTube videos to winning awards and being on the big screen. Um, you know, these aren't even new anecdotes. These are five years old almost. And as I see it, content is content, actors are actors, and it's really one collective industry. So, you know, it, it all makes sense that we should be approaching this all as one right now. Yeah. And I think, you know, and, and, and Catherine, I'd love to hear from you and on your side, coming from like one of the biggest talent agencies, did you notice more of those traditional kind of like what Byron is saying that now, especially during quarantine, we've seen a lot of these, um, uh, you know, big names migrating into the influencer space. So have you noticed more of that happening now? Or yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I first started on the talent side, um, you know, my boss was representing some of the top you know, actors and actresses in Hollywood, you know, Academy Award winners. And these clients were super protective over their brand and kind of refused to touch anything with social media because it was seen as almost, um, you know, inauthentic and didn't really mesh with their idea of what a big luxury beauty campaign or what have you should look like. Um, but like Byron was saying, there has been this, this gradual perception shift so I wouldn't say that talent, traditional talent are migrating into the influencer space per se, but that I agree with Byron that it's kind of become one in the same and that traditional talent are realizing that the value of investing in their social media and capitalizing on that influence has become a priority, not just as an additional revenue stream, but as part of the talent's overall brand and what they stand for. And so... I mean, I think that's been a result of a few things, like Byron was saying, it, it, it's kind of clear that there's been that crossover, you know, traditional, di like digitally traditional talents, such as, um, you know, Liza Koshy or, um, or, you know, you know, people who are getting awards in different areas. Um, Liza Koshy just signed with, I think it was Red Westbrook Inc. production company. So she's moved from Vine and now is signing with Will Smith's production agency. So at the same time, you have the traditional celebrities doing things in the influencer space, um, such as, you know, uh, the Will Smiths of the world, the, the Reese Witherspoons, uh, Gordon Ramsay, my favorite Jack Black personally, uh, who, you know, have always been on that traditional side and now they're starting YouTube channels, they're starting TikToks because not only are they realizing that that's what brands want, but they're seeing that it's also this whole unique way to completely capture a whole new fan base um, from you know younger people who haven't seen them in Legally Blonde or School of Rock or whatever. So I think that it's, I wouldn't say they're traditionally migrating across from the traditional space to the influencer space, but that they've realized that adding social media to their public persona is just so valuable and not just for pot potential brand deals, but for building their own brand. Because at the end of the day, buyers are buyers, right? Whether it's a brand or a movie studio or a music label, your influence will be taken into account and it ultimately affects the opp opportunities that are presented to you. Um, like we would hear about that all the time, not just in my world of commercial endorsements, but in when I worked at the talent agency, motion picture agents would constantly be encouraging their clients to build their social media following because it gives you a competitive edge. You know, if a, a casting director is trying to choose between two relatively unknown actors and one has a huge social media following and the other one doesn't, I mean, you're going to choose the one with the following because they're going to post about it and it's free promotion. So I think it's become social media has become so important for traditional talent, whether they like it or not. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask, because I, I feel like that's important to to note that this is a space that has to be taken seriously in its own right. So 
Um, I think it's a, it's amazing that SAG After is actually you know uh, capturing this work. Um, so well done, Shane, for for all your hard work for that. Um, uh, so uh, let's go with Kiana right now. Kiana, you, I want to, uh, you know, understand and, and know a little bit more about what inspired you to become an advocate for the influencer community. Talk about your experience with that. Sure, but just to pivot off of what Catherine was saying, there's 3.6 billion people that use social media. So if you're not tapping into your fandom as a brand or a celebrity, or just as a as a creator, I mean, you're missing out on a major opportunity just to one, build community and also to create advocates for your products or services. Uh, and I think that is like the beauty of um, the platforms and even extending your brand off of the platforms as well. But I got into this space, particularly in what I'm doing with the American Influencer Council, just because I think there is just a skewed public perception for the creator space. On the extreme end, you have people who think creators are just selfie taking gift grabbers or you know, responsible for gross misconduct. And you know the narrative of creators being American small business owners isn't something that dominates our, our media or our headlines. And I think that you have a good group of entrepreneurs who stand for integrity, who are powering this space. And those are the individuals that we advocate for because they're driving the influencer economy. And so when I think of the future of this space, it's important to recognize those individuals because they are um, you know, at the forefront of what is good about the creator space. Yeah. And how do you feel, uh, Kiana, you know, like, how would you want to see this influencer community starting to evolve um, now that, you know, we have so many other platforms starting to come up? Yeah, you know, professional standards and encouraging business ethics are something that we are really working on um, at the American Influencer Council. And I think, you know, with this influencer agreement, we're just recognizing that the creator space is changing. We're in this age of, you know, people wanting equitable representation, wanting more rights, recognizing that this isn't a gig or, you know, something that you just step into um, for a short amount of time that, you know, this is a career. And so I am super excited about just helping creators understand that, you know, quality of life is something that they can think about, you know, being, you know, I started in this space when I was 19. And so when you're a teenager, you know, are you thinking about pension and healthcare? Probably not, but it's super important to know that you should be making an investment um, in your future and that when you are 60, that you can retire and what you're doing as a creator is important and there is a future into this. So um, I see the evolution of people recognizing that they have bargaining power and that, you know, that we need to invest in the youth, in the nanos, in the creators that are coming up and that we need strong business leaders to set precedent so that our space is, is strong and healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think education is a huge part of um, this space that is kind of new for a lot of people. Um, you know, people that are maybe not that young that want to start in this space, they still can, you know? We need to encourage this idea of lifelong learning mm -hmm. and passing knowledge across our industry, whether that's coming from talent managers or influencer marketing directors, 
you know, and, or creators themselves, because that's what fuels innovation. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think that leads to a question for Byron. Um, you know, you are oftentimes on the front line advocating for your talent, right? What are some of your greatest challenges and greatest satisfactions in that work? Um, I'm, I'm going to try to steer both of these answers in the direction of the influencer contract and ways that it can help. Um, I definitely think that one of the obvious sort of satisfactions is, you know, I'm in the business of empowering people to take off. Um, you know, I try to let my clients go be creative and let me handle the rest. So when they get to where they're trying to go, that's where I feel like, I've won and I've sort of provided them with the ability to lever on to me and really shoot for the stars. And so, you know, with that, I think that why I'm excited about this contract is that it will help pave the way for people who are working in the creator business to move more into the SAG, you know, general broader opportunities that SAG provides. And this can be a stepping stone to help people get into those bigger projects that can help them really put gasoline on their career. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think one of the biggest challenges that I as a manager have, and this is something that I, I'm hoping that this contract is going to be helping and I'm very optimistic about, is uh, payments, actually. Um, you know, we spoke earlier about the differences and where the lines are drawn between traditional and digital work. And I think that one of the biggest differences between a traditional television show and an influencer brand deal is that a traditional television show, you're on payroll and the union supervising it. You're sort of getting paid every couple of weeks. There's deductions being made. When you do a brand deal as a creator, you're a vendor to a major company, which means you're doing net 60 pay, net 60 pay terms, mm -hmm. net 90 pay terms. And you're dealing with B2B accounting where with these big fortune 50 companies, they're supposed to pay you in 60 days. And on day 61, they say, oh, no, we missed the invoice. We'll get started now. Um, and, you know, I, I once a day, I deal with an accounting issue with somebody who is not paying a client on time, not paying them properly, et cetera. And, you know, I, I joke around, it could be 10, 15 percent of my time is spent on this. So I'm really optimistic that that's one area that this contract is going to help is just with the fact that creators are paid by businesses, but they are paid as businesses, sorry, but they have to live off of these dollars. And that, you know, I think is one of the biggest challenges that the creator industry has right this minute. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that's a, an issue with most projects. That's the power of our union. That's the power of having that, you know, which uh, thank God we have people to go bat for us. And and with that, you know, Shane, talk, you, you talked a little bit about uh, intent um, behind the influencer agreement, but what are your hopes for how it gets used and developed? Yeah, I mean, these are early days of the influencer agreement. We're, you know, stepping into this space and we're doing so you know, with thought and care, but, you know, our hope is to grow and develop the agreement as the needs of the community dictate and demand. So we're a member run organization, you know, we take um, cue from our membership and the community. So we're going to grow and evolve as you all demand. <laughs> and I'm really excited by the opportunities based on, you know, what Kiana is building and what Byron and Catherine's and what Wes is living every day, you know, the sky's the limit, so. Yeah, uh, and, and um, you know, uh, Catherine, you you also representing a ton of talent in, in, in the influencer space and now alongside with big brands. Um, has your broad experience working across both aisles given you a greater insight into this space? And what do you find maybe that has benefited you by working both sides? Yeah, so I mean, like uh, like you mentioned before, I started on the talent side and since then I've moved onto the brand side. So I've really gotten to see, yeah, both sides of the aisles and it, it's been it's been very helpful in my deal making. But I think the biggest insight that that 
that working on both sides has given me is that the influencer space, social media, is very quickly becoming synonymous, especially in the minds of brands, with the commercial endorsement space, right? So there's been this huge shift in what advertising looks like and how brands are spending their money. So traditionally, it was an advertising campaign. You had TV, you had billboards, you had print. Um, and then later came digital and online, but now social media has come into the picture as of the last, you know, five, 10 years. Um, and especially with the pandemic, I've seen it absolutely explode. So it went from, you know, those traditional mediums. And now you also have social media. Not only is that an additional medium on which to run your advertisements, which of course it is, um, but it's also the first and only medium that enables a brand ambassador to directly promote their product to their own fan base. And it's the first and only medium that really allows brands to save a lot of money because now they can just pay one person, one influencer to create the content, receive, uh, receive the services of a performer, a writer, a producer, a director, the production company, the video editor, and then distribute it to their audience that normally a brand would have to pay uh, like a media buy to get. And so because of those things, I think brands have been able to get really specific and intentional with their marketing strategy. And instead of putting all their eggs into one basket with a big expensive marketing campaign, they're now able to get the same amount of eyeballs while targeting very specific audiences um, by working on, you know, influencer and even micro influencer levels and kind of spreading out, there's more pieces of the pie to go around, um, which I think is really great because, you know, it, it means that brands are, you know, able to become more focused and representative of smaller target audiences, um, whether it be, you know, tapping into like a growing brand wanting to tap into the China market and um, seeding product with local influences there, or whether it be, you know, a brand looking for someone whose dog has eczema and walked in the last pride parade and wanting to tap into the market there, you know, you'd be surprised how specific these brands can get. And so that, that progression in the nature of advertising from traditional to, to kind of more social media driven um, has become really evident. And it's gone from even what, what I've seen is like, it used to be, you know, a social media ask was sometimes part of the deal. Maybe one in one or two in every five offers had a social media component. Then it was every deal had a social media component. Then it was brands were choosing which talent to partner with based on how many social media followers they had and what engagement they had. Now it's become such a huge negotiation point that when it, it's presumed that social media is gonna be included. And the question is how many posts, what's the allocation of posts versus stories? What's the, you know, how many swipe up links? What's the media blackout? Like there's all of these, um, these, this power has been kind of allocated towards social media in the space. And so, and like I said, especially in the, like the past year, past six months with the pandemic, we've seen the brands really started heavily relying on social media campaigns as standalone campaigns in a way that they hadn't before. So I think another takeaway there is that the influencer space is really changing every day. And it's important that, you know, influencers are able to be recognized as, um, as part of this talent world and content creation world and that they're protected in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting then, you know, Wes, if you can kind of follow up with that in, in the sense of how you, have you found things change in, since you got into this space? I think it's interesting to hear on your perspective as well. Man, uh, things have just constantly been evolving and, you know, this, this program is, is part of the evolution. Uh, Byron and I, we, we were kind of like at the forefront of a lot of it and we saw like how things were going and we we really felt that uh you know taking the time to make the branded products that we're producing our our, our product placement videos that we're doing uh top tier you know we wanted it to look seamless and make it seem as if it's not just a social media campaign um and uh i noticed a lot of other other creators doing the same thing um at first you know, the general consensus for a creator was, that's just a brand deal. I'm gonna keep it moving. But we're getting paid to do something we're doing for free anyway. You know, why not 
take it up a notch? Why not take it to the next level? And, you know, like you said before, or like Shane said before, become a one-stop shop for these brands. So I felt like that was always very important. Um, and as that happened, everyone started growing together. So you have your cinematographers, you have your audio, you, ha you have your whole production team to create this one minute, six second, 30 second video. Um, and just the evolution of it has brought us to this point. So it's, yeah. it's really awesome to see. That's wonderful. And my last question before we go into, uh, you know, uh, member questions right now is uh, to Shane, what is one thing that you want our SAG after members to walk away with about knowing about this agreement? And not just SAG after members, I think it's important for every member, even a non member right now. What do you want them to walk away with? Um, that's a great question. I want folks to recognize this is not super scary, right? This is actually very accessible. Um, and this agreement was really built to be a tool to service and support this community, our members and our future members. And these folks are wildly talented, multi-hyphenated talent. Um, small business owners, as Kiana talks about, and it's exciting to be able to support this community with ways that they can actually have a, a longer career because now they have the support of an institution like SAG after behind them. So. I love that. Thank you. And Rebecca, I will leave it to you so that you can get us some member questions. Great and good. This also gives us a chance to get you to answer some, Natalia, which I which I love. There you go. Uh, so I, I will just say one of the things that uh, has come up, uh, and it's it's like a perfect day to be doing this because uh, today is actually uh, the ninth anniversary anniversary of the merger of SAG and AFTRA. So today being the ninth anniversary, happy anniversary to all the SAG AFTRA members. I remember when we were putting these two unions together there was such a conversation between leaders and members about all the things that we wanted to do, all of the areas of work that we wanted to organize, uh, whether it was audiobooks, very exciting, very successful stuff like this, uh, broadcast stations, more work for members, actor performers. To me, these kinds of things are like the, the, the finally, we get to do all those things and we've been doing them for a lot of years but to me having this today feels just particularly fitting you know uh, as an anniversary gift to all the sag after members that we're moving into this space so i thank you all for that uh you especially shane and all the people on the commercials committee for their innovation and I think that also leads me to when we make big changes, and I think that this has happened, you know, in our industry, I always joke to people that, you know, what if uh, uh, when the time came on and talkies became uh, films where people spoke, what if we resisted and didn't like boldly go into that space, where would we be? I look at this and I see tons of excitement around it and tons of like realizing that, you know, things do evolve and when they evolve, they actually improve and they get better. Sometimes there's those moments where you have a little uncertainty at the beginning, but uh, once you're really in it, can you imagine now if we were just only watching uh, silent movies at this point, we wouldn't be doing that. Or, you know, like when television came along, people thought it was going to destroy everything else. What these things are, are great changes for, for us and great changes for our members because things grow from that. And that's what I hear from all these people that are so wonderful in their content creation, in their innovation. So it's 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 really the good conversation. Shane, we got a question that's for you, and maybe you can walk people through this a little bit more. Um, what happens if I'm doing a brand deal with the SAG after signatory? Can you get, go a little bit more on a deep dive? You covered it a little bit, but a little bit more. Yeah. So um... In addition to building out the influencer agreement, we built out a complementary tool for our bargaining partners, our signatories to the commercials contract. So in the event that someone gets approached by a signatory advertiser or ad agency, we'll make available the influencer waiver to those entities so that they can be covered under a SAG after contract, but the brand will have an adjusted allocation so that they're not breaking the bank in this space as well. But everyone's covered, everyone's working together. We're really excited. Always happy to answer questions, influencer at sagafter.org, we handhold. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'll back, Natalia said earlier that you're, uh, they get the day or night. That's true of so many of our staff doing a great job. So thank you for that. We had a question uh, here about, I think this is interesting. You kind of touched on it, but maybe, do you think the whole influencer phenomenon is a fad 
or something that is here to stay. Who wants to jump on that one? I will. This is a multi-billion dollar industry that is thriving. And you have, you know, a trade association that launched last year, other creator unions in the UK globally. I speak to creators daily, not only in the US, but globally who want protections and resources to develop their business and to push their professionalism forward. So I, I'm super excited about the possibilities of our industry and, you know, with numbers like $15 billion industry for 2021, 20, 2022, you know, it's very exciting um, space to be in. And I think any digital market um, is on the up and up. And so to be in a high growth industry yeah, that's powering innovation is where you want to be for sure. Absolutely. I think it's really important to recognize the time that we're in. Um, you know, they always say like, you know, kids of the future. And uh, you, it's, it's always good to evolve with the times. You know, I, I notice, you know, just as I watch people grow within this industry and, and people from back in the day that that made things super dope or super hot uh they they're still relevant today because they constantly are able to evolve with with change and I I think a lot of times where people where people fall off is where they refuse to to adapt you know if you refuse to adapt you're gonna you're gonna fall behind and then say oh man I missed out you don't want to miss out like this is it's so important it's so cool to to be part of a community and we're all connected with each other. So um, yeah, I don't think it's a fad at all. I, I actually would argue that it's not even new. It's just been scaling over the past few yeah. years and being more empowered by the internet. I mean, I always use references that date back to the fifties. I talk about how, you know, Elvis, they MGM made Elvis movies to just, you know, it was merchandise for him in the way that, you know, influencer movies are oftentimes specifically made as almost merchandise for that talent. But if you look also to the 50s, there was the rise of the micro-influencer when there's stories of the soda companies going to high schools and giving free soda to the popular kids to drink soda. Um, as I see it, everything from influencer gifting up to influencer movies are things that we've had for 70 years now. We're just seeing it at an enormous amount of scale because the internet and technology are empowering it. That is, you guys gave a fabulous answer. Does anybody else want to jump in on that? Um, I, yeah, I would just agree with what everybody said. I mean, it, from an advertising perspective, and that's really all I can speak to. I'm not a content creator, but I mean, you, you know that brands are always going to spend money where the eyeballs are, right? And everybody's on the internet. Everyone's on social media and it's only growing and growing and growing every day. So that's not going to change anytime soon. I think that, um, opportunities for influencers to continue to make money in that revenue stream and partner with brands to sponsor their content is only something that we're going to see continue to grow. That's, that's terrific. So uh, we got a question. Uh, what's the difference between an influencer and a content creator? I'll take that. Um, one of them is a more empowering way to describe it. Um, a content creator is defining somebody by their art, an influencer is defining someone by their use. And so while influencer is a very customary term, I think the content creator celebrates that, celebrates what they're making, whereas influencer defines their value to the market and to those that are employing them. I also, um, just, just to piggyback off that, I also think yeah. it's important in this space to be influential, you know, um, when you're creating and networking with these brands, uh, you're showing the world with the, the possibilities of where an influencer can go. Yes, we're creating content uh, to make people laugh or, or educate, but you, you recognize that this is a viable uh, career path, you know, so it's important to showcase like, hey, we can, we're being influential on, on, the content that we're creating or with the content we're creating. 
I, yeah. I would add to that too. I would say, I, I agree that I think that influenza, may, I think maybe influenza was the word that it's kind of dated now. I think, you know, it, it's almost like the word people came up with when social media first started getting popular. Everyone was like, what do we call this group of talent that are famous for being on the internet? Like they're influencing people, I guess. So I feel like that's how it kind of started and now like Byron was saying content creation is really what these people are doing and it, it's it's merging it's not separate there's not influences in the traditional talent it's just like people are creating content um and and that's what it is so I I think they're one in the same and, and it, it is it is just about a di different word it doesn't doesn't change the meaning I think yeah. a lot of people use it interchangeably and it also depends if you're asking a man or a woman, because I find that it can be very gender specific. A lot of men prefer creator over influencer, um, which is uh, very interesting as well. Yeah, I just feel like when, when I'm defined as an influencer, I feel like nobody cares, you know? I feel, I, I honestly feel like that, so I, I'll, have these discussions with Byron off, often and I'm just like man why I don't I'm a, I'm a director I'm, a, I'm creating I I'm not just an influencer I feel like it it pigeonholes me in a way I think it's it, the best way to describe it is just it's it's too pigeonholed right like you know kind of like what Wes is talking about being kind of in that pigeonhole of what you are we have this perception when all of this kind of started coming up of what an influencer looked like and seemed like and did and whatever. And now I think that space has become more creative. That space has become where it's much more power. It's much more, um, you are pretty much a studio, right? You are pumping out this stuff and you have the power to make or break or change things that are happening even in the world and how you perceive that. So I think content creator is a little bit stronger in that aspect versus us thinking influencer, oh, just somebody who is in a bikini and done. Mm. Yeah, it's all of our next gen performers and younger board members and people that are engaged working at the unions that are at sort of the front of their career, they use the term content creator all the time, I think for the reason that that uh, Byron kicked off with. And it's it's, I think it's empowering and people think of themselves as hyphenates. They can do all these other things. And I, I do like the empowerment around it. I, I have to ask you, Wes, uh, there was a question that we received of somebody that had looked at your Instagram and it, your, your last response sort of leads into this perfectly. Uh, you seem to be uh, very successful in many areas. Do you think that that would have happened without social media? Was social media for you the on-ramp to that? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I've always looked at social media as a stepping stone to get to where I really want to go. And uh, in the process, I've seemed to have inspired uh, my peers. So I think that social media fast forwarded me in my career. Um, because I was, you know, like I said, I was traveling around directing and and um, and doing photography. And I'm a big believer in, you know, if your light's meant to shine, it can't be dimmed. But I do think social media was, you know, kind of like the jetpack that helped me really like take off. That's awesome. I like the kind of like a jetpack. I'm, I'm writing that one down <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Shane, I've got a question from you. Uh, for you, the uh, are influencers treated differently than traditional SAG after members once they join the union? I, I'm I'm glad somebody asked this one because I've been asked this enough different times. I'm sure you have too. So go ahead. Yes, I've been asked many times, and the answer is no. We treat influencers the same way we do our actors or singers or stunt performers. You know, we recognize everyone as a community as talent. Um, same dues apply same initiation fee, same rules, um, but also same opportunities, right? So you're not stamped with a giant eye on your forehead once you join through the influencer agreement. You're just in our system, in our community. 
great. Thank you for that, Shane. Uh, we we have a, a member here that says I'm I'm a traditional actor, uh, but have been working on growing my social media presence so that I can work with brands. Does anybody have any advice that would attract advertisers? Uh, post every day. Um, I say uh, be be aware of your brand. You know, creating a brand is is really creating identity and really be true to yourself. I found that things really took a change for me when I stopped trying to be something I wasn't. You know, when I I was myself, I I like comics, I like cartoons, I still collect toys, as you see in the background. Uh, Those things resonated with people that like the same things. So there, you you have a unique thumbprint uh, and there are gonna be people that relate to you. So just, really be true to yourself and you know don't worry about the numbers or the views like all that stuff's going to come just you know stay stay your course and doing continue doing what makes you happy I, I i can just say a little bit about you know coming from like the the actor's perspective in that aspect when i figured out that that was a huge space uh, what west talked about branding is is huge but also thinking about, you know, because as an actor, you think, oh, but my brand as an actor is this. How can I translate that into the social media space? And I feel like it's a little bit separate in the sense that my brand maybe as an actor might be a little different where I'm like the cops and the FBI people that tend to happen to me all the time, right? But on social media, I have more of uh, the the inspirational type of of following and that is my brand on social media and that's much more me similar to what is Wes is saying it doesn't mean that you have to take what your branding is in acting and put that into social media because that's going to be too hard to keep up with if that makes sense that's like lying every single day um and I think being way more truthful and open about stuff not everything has to be you know oh, look, how skinny I look all the time or how this, it's okay, we're all human. And I feel like, I don't know, for me, that's a huge thing of being honest on my social media. And there's times I don't feel like posting and it is a little hard because it is a daily thing or a weekly thing that you need to be doing. Um, So keeping that up, I think before you start in that road is taking the time to figure out what that is for you. What will feed your soul before you continue into the social media platform? That's great. Catherine, you've seen behind the curtains working at CAA and also with all the big brands. Uh, what are some of the mistakes that you've seen uh, content creators, influencers make that might cost them some uh, brand deals? What are the what are the things that you see? Uh, I mean, can not do that. I don't want to say being too outspoken on controversial topics because, you know, even then brands sometimes want someone who's outspoken on the right topics. Obviously there is always a risk in that when you get like too political. Um, So that's one thing to be like cognizant of, but I wouldn't say to not to let it sense of what you post and what you believe in because like I said there's so many niches out there and there's a brand for almost every single one. The other one I would say is um, people who, and this is to piggyback off what Wes and Natalia said, like you have to be authentic, right? You can't be out there creating content that you think brands are gonna like because people can see right through it and you're not gonna gain you know, an authentic, big, uh, loyal following by doing that. You have to have the um, authenticity and the sense of self and your own brand first and you have the following and basically the rest will come you you can't reverse engineer it in that way and I think that's a mistake people make and that they get impatient right like they say oh I, you said to be consistent I've been posting you know three times a week for like three weeks and where are the deals it's like it's got to be a little bit longer and it's got to be you know your fans need to like you need to be part of their kind of routine and they're used to seeing your face and they know what to expect, you know, whether that's like a new video every Wednesday or, you know, you make sure you post a morning story every day, whatever that might be, it just needs to be consistent. Great. So uh, Byron, as a talent manager, what do you think about SAG after getting into this space? What has your, been your impression about it? I mean, I've been supportive of this for a really long time because 
uh, 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 similar to things I've said earlier today, I, I'm believing that this is one industry and that this isn't bifurcated. This isn't multiple communities competing against each other. The pie is growing. And so the services that support one part of the pie should be supporting all of the pie. And I, I've articulated that to Shane for a very long time now, and I've been really supportive of this, but happy that you guys are part of this now. That's great. Yeah, you, you, you and I were talking beforehand. How many years ago was that? Yeah, three and a half years ago. Or, yeah, it was or a while ago. In, in pandemic time. There you go. Exactly. Uh, well, it's two years plus a pandemic. <laughs> Right. There you go. Uh, I think it's actually also perfect that we're having this come out during the pandemic. It feels like it being the anniversary of merger. It feels like this is the right moment to just keep moving forward. Um, right. Uh, Kiana, can I ask you, we had a question uh, that, you know, it sounds like you are doing something super cool. I agree with your American Influencer Council. So people want to know how they can join. How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So we are an invite only trade association. So you need to get nomination by two current members, or you can also go on our website, AmericanInfluencer.com and submit an inquiry and our membership committee will be in touch with more details. So that is our current process. We are a startup trade association. We celebrate our one year anniversary on June 30th. Um, we launched on Mashable's Global Social Media Day last year. So we are growing our membership base. So don't be shy, submit an inquiry. Um, we do get back to everybody. Great, congratulations. Uh, so here, this is for everybody. Uh, what platform makes the most sense, uh, the member saying, for me to focus on in terms of building up a following? Where do you want to be? Them. All of them. You don't want to, you don't want to, all, all of them. You don't want to put your eggs in one basket because this is the internet and we could lose a website at any moment. Uh, Vine is a perfect example of that. Like I've watched my friends have, millions of followers and focus all their uh, content on one platform and Vine went away and so did they. Um, I found that when my friends post their content every place else, you know, they have, they're still here today and they're still creating content. So post them every place. I'll add on to that as well. I mean, even within one app, uh, you know, my, for example, when I open Instagram, my thing that I go to first is stories, right? I click through all the stories. I have friends who don't even notice the stories. They only go through the grid. And then there's other people who will go straight to the explore page, um, which I never do. So it's, it's even within the app, um, it's recommended that you kind of cover all bases, almost treat them like different apps, because otherwise you're missing out on up to 25% of the people who are actually on that app and would see you if only it was in the area that they're looking at. So that's just another tip that I've gotten yep. from the, the people at Instagram. Yep. And I would also say the, the, you know, if you, if it's too overwhelming, because here's the thing, I think for newcomers, it is very overwhelming to just pump out to all these social media sites um, start small, choose one that you fall in love with and move to the next and add on. One thing I will say is don't, use the the stuff on let's say for example on instagram where you can post on instagram and it shoots to to facebook and stuff like post separate you got to post separate because that's how you get more on the algorithm um and that's something we didn't really touch upon but i think the algorithm is is huge to to consider nowadays it's very different than when it started um so start small and choose what you like and kind of grow in that aspect also also don't be scared to repurpose your content because there's billions of people on the internet. Uh, just because you posted it does not mean the whole world has seen it. Um, I know, uh, it. you know, even with myself, sometimes it causes anxiety. Um, but just, you know, take it one post at a time. And, you know, remember to have fun. Well, fun fact, 90% of all content posted is never seen. So repurpose. Have a repurposing content strategy. 
Um, and don't be afraid to dive into your archives and be strategic with how you repost. A tactic that we leverage is putting a, a still photo as a thumbnail so that in your feed, it might be a same video asset, but it looks different because it's a different thumbnail or the first 10 seconds is different video footage. So you can be very clever with how you repackage content. Um, but I don't necessarily advocate for any creator to oversaturate and be on multiple channels because it's a lot to maintain and what you don't wanna have is an inactive feed. So be intentional with where you place yourself and pick channels where you find you have an active community and put your efforts there. That's great. Uh, Shane, we've got another one for you. Uh, besides uh, potential pension and health coverage, what are the benefits of working under the influencer agreement? I think you kind of covered some, but go for the deeper dive. Yeah, covered, covered some, but you know, this is one of the things that I feel most strongly about in terms of the influencer agreement is ownership of the final content. You know, I've seen contracts specifically with nano and smaller influencers where they don't necessarily have representatives, where the brand has complete ownership of the content and can repurpose and repackage that content at their sole discretion. And that makes me nervous as staff at SAG-AFTRA because we want to ensure that folks get compensated fairly and appropriately, but also protected so that they're not carrying necessarily a conflict out into the world. You know, conflicts are very real even in the digital space. So, you know, it's actually one thing I hope will help shift the entire industry, um, but it's an educational process why that's important to integrate in your contracts. You know, that's likeness that's is important. <laughs> so important, you know, that's so important to me. We, we talk about this all the time about protecting your image and voice at SAG-AFTRA. So uh, I'm glad you answered that one. Uh, okay, so we've got just a few more questions. I'm gonna do these real fast. Uh, uh, I'm a, m what you call a micro influencer and this person wants to know uh, what to ask for brands when they reach out. What's, what's the best approach? So they're asking the right questions. Who wants to uh, grab that? What are, what are the obligations to post? You know, that's probably the first one to ask. And then you can evaluate from there, like how much you think you should be compensated, whether it's a story, whether it's changing the link in your bio, um, and whether it's an Instagram slide or real, like, I feel like all of them have different prices associated with them. So ask them, you know, I, and you know, another thing too, is, uh, I'm a big believer in whoever says the first number, uh, loses or wins um so ask them what they're looking to spend yeah i agree i'll say that there's always more money first of all um the brand is never going to make you an offer that's their best offer don't be afraid to advocate for yourself if you don't have someone to advocate for you because they've reached out to you for a reason um and that's not saying like you know I won't accept anything less than X, but just open the conversation up so that, you know, nine times out of 10, they'll, they'll come back and say, yeah, we found an additional five grand or whatever. Worst case scenario, they said, no, that's our max budget. And at least you know that you're getting, you know, what they're saying is the best deal. Um, another thing I would consider as well as the services and like what, you know, what kind of uh, burden it's going to be on your time and your creativity is also if there's any other factors that you should consider, namely if there's um, exclusivity in the deal, is this going to take you out of the category? You know, if you're posting for a car brand, are you are they asking you to be exclusive and not post for any other car brands? And if so, for how long? Kind of do a, a opportunity cost benefit there. Um, and then ultimately, what, what the usage is. Make sure you understand how they plan to use it. Are they just planning to have you do it and it goes out to your fans? Are they asking that they have the right to repost? Are they asking that they have the right to put paid advertising behind it? And none of those things are good or bad, but it just is important to consider um, because you wanna make sure that it meshes with your own brand strategy and where you see your personal brand going. You know, If it's a brand you're not sure about, but you really need the money, like 
maybe you're going to ask that the usage be kind of less so you get less exposure. But if you're trying to build your following and you don't care who sees it, you just want to get your content out there, then like ask them to repost it and, and stuff like that. So I, I think just kind of get as much information as you can about the usage and the restrictions on, on your own possible deals in the future is also important. I think it's really important to find out how the brand found you. And we just did a creator lunch and learn about this topic because that's your SEO, you know, that's your gold, you know, how a brand found you gives you also a lot of, you know, you know, the creator space is vast. So how a, create, how a brand came to your page, you know, before you, a good friend of mine, Blair says, before you rush to the altar and you start talking about rates, first get some information. How did they find you? What about your content attracted them um, to reach out? Just try to baseline understand, you know, what unique selling points did they just happen to hit on you? Because then that allows you to start understanding how you can pitch to them um, because that then creates a, a way for you to then customize if you have a pitch deck. And then, you know, ask for a kickoff meeting. I never encourage creators to disclose too much because the more you initially start you know, emailing and disclosing, you sort of uh, give too much and that, you know, takes away from your bargaining power. And that's what SAG is kind of all about is making sure you have, you know, the right uh, tools in your toolkit to be able to bargain effectively. So um, get the kickoff meeting, understand what their goals are, what their KPIs are, what success looks to them, what past campaigns they've had with influencers, what does success look like for that brand, and then you can define success for them. Great. I'll just add to, um, sorry, Natalia, I'll just add really quickly, read your contracts. Don't sign anything before reading it. That's all I'm going to say. Having read a lot of contracts and being like, why did they sign this? <laughs> I fully agree with Shane on that one. <laughs> yeah, we all do. We're like that. It, read them, keep them, all of that. Uh, Natalia, did you want to jump in there? Because we're just about to wrap up. No, I was just about to say if anybody had any last thoughts, because I know we are uh, up to time right now. Um, yep. Any last thoughts from anybody would be welcome. Anything you want to leave members with? You've stunned them into silence. You know, that's usually me. I'm let's glad go, if it was you this time. Down, let's go down no, the line. Was, At least one thing that you can go. do each person. So let's go with Byron first. Oh God, um, put me on the spot. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think if I were just to, to leave off on one thing, you know, I, 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 to most of the members who are listening to this call, I think that this, opportunity opens up, uh, or I guess this new contract opens up a lot of new opportunities for you guys to find work in areas that you might not have been paying attention to or might not have been trying. Um, shoot for the moon. There's a ton of opportunities out there right now. And especially right now, while there's less work while people are still at home, there's a lot of really cool ways that you can expand your career, build your career, or pivot your career without leaving your doorstep right now. That's amazing. Shane, I'm just going up my boxes. <laughs> I was hoping to go last. Um, I was just going to say, I want, no, I'll go, I'll go. Um, I want everyone, <laughs> okay, really quickly. Um, any questions, big or small, reach out. We don't bite. We're here to help. So influencer at sagafter.org. Excellent. Catherine, Wes, Anna, jump in. Catherine, uh, go. The creator space is a large space and there is a lot of opportunity for everyone. I think that, you know, in the initial days that people felt like they couldn't share information or share, you know, resources or how, you know, they got things done production wise or, you know, um, there wasn't as much community I think it's super important to share knowledge, 
um, and it only fortifies our industry. So, you know, if you are an entertainer or an actor and you're following creators, reach out, you know, introduce yourself, you know, the more you connect, the better. And the more creators, entertainers, we're all networking, the better it is because the flow of information and is just moving and it pushes everything forward. Oh, I like that. I'm a big uh, believer in sharing information. So, uh, you know, if you're an actor and you're trying to figure it out, do not hesitate to reach out. I do not mind sharing information. Um, I, I would just don't know how I ended up lost, but I guess um, here we go. I think, look, I think at the end of the day, the new contract is good for both brands because it's removing a bunch of, you know, barriers that maybe they weren't a signatory, they're scared, they don't know how to, like how to navigate the space. And now they have kind of sag on their side to offer them ways to, to get these commercial contracts to work. And then at the same time, it's protecting, you know, members and potentially new members who can join now um, to be protected in a space that is their livelihood. And I think that's really important. I like that. SAG after on your side. Very good. So we are going to wrap it up there. I first off want to thank uh, Shane for the great presentation at the top and being a part of the panel, all the panelists and Natalia, what a great host you were today. This was just an excellent resource and discussion for everybody. I know people will share it. Maybe everybody will share it on their social media. There you go. That'll be exciting. Uh, so uh, I want to also make sure that everybody, uh, let's give these panelists a round of applause because I know you took out even some extra time uh, to be with us today, a little longer than usual, but you guys are talking about so many great things. We just could not let you go. Uh, so thank you for that. So on behalf of the SAG After team, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, as uh, Shane mentioned, if you were interested in hearing more about the agreement, sagafter.org slash influencer. And if you need uh, more information, you can also uh, influencer at sagafter.org. And I know uh, Shane will be right back to you. So I want to thank everybody who joined us today. Make sure that you, on a, on a day where we're talking about content creation and social media, you need to follow SAGAFTER on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. You're watching it on YouTube. You can subscribe right now, right? That would be pretty easy. You're already there. Uh, so really make sure you do that so you can see more of this great stuff. I, I'm so grateful to, for our guest today. So I'm going to say goodbye for SAG After and another big round of applause for our fantastic guests. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Thank you. <laughs>